what's it like for you having created amazing things in the past but I had to maybe scale them down because of uh, the, the browser experience to be able to kind of have those all the way up slider wise yeah um, it's a tough one I mean the guys are always pushing boundaries the design guys are coming up with these cool ideas the good thing at Jagex is our engine team are pretty much like up there with our design team so while they're designing the things the guys are already making the platform they need to support the uh, weird and wacky ideas that are pushing the boundaries of browser game the other thing that's very unique about uh, the RuneScape uh, game universe is that there's all different ways to play outside of the four that we've already discussed. But when it comes to creating content for all those different types of gameplay, what are the challenges when it comes to that? It's a really tough one. I mean, you don't want to just neglect a certain player type, you know, and then they'll be left with no content offerings for months and months and months. So even though you may have a combat um, update, for instance, we might choose to cross that with other elements. There may be um, a social element in there. There's a mini game in there that where one task is just to call out the um, aspects of the gameplay to the combatants. Or, so they are just a caller. They're set there on the horn and they just call and they're, they're, they're doing their social element and it's they're part of the combat gameplay. Um, so we just try and bring them all together. I think that's the key thing. And it, it's about seeing a, a living, breathing sort of economy and environment. You know, that's what RuneScape's become. Can you give us a sense f with those weekly updates of how quickly and how you guys adapt to what players are telling you? Yeah, I mean, um, we'll see something on the forums. If it's bad, we can, ha we, I mean, just for instance, a fix or a change. We don't like it. The players really don't like it. We could probably get something out within 10 minutes. Um, a huge, like massive, massive change, obviously, with further testing, further assets going into the game. It might take a few hours. But if we're working on a big quest or something like that, obviously, it will take a bit longer. But I mean, it's the most rapid development I've ever seen in all my years working in games industry. And when it comes to having done that now for years and years, how is that preparing you for this sixth age where what players dictate is going to be even more important than ever before? This is it. We're, Jagex um, and our team is in a really good footing to, to be able to do this, more so than anyone else. We've done this, this is how we've worked anyway. We've done the weekly updates. Now what we're doing is basically letting them be the directors. So obviously our design team's got a lot of work to make sure they cover as many permutations as possible. But then even if, it, if the outcome isn't there, it isn't already designed, we're gonna do it and we're gonna deploy it. For someone who's coming into this game new for the first time, can you just talk a little about the world and what's going on? Yeah, um, if you're, if, if you're in, it's, it's the best time to start RuneScape, really. Yes, you have 10 years worth of content, but from the world wakes, this is the cultural shift. This is the age shift and our technology shift to support this as well. From playing that one quest, within a few hours, you'll be up to date with everyone and you can be part of the adventure and actually changing the way the game will be for the years to come. Can you talk a little bit about also that the older way to play isn't going away, your, your Java history? Yeah, um, being, predominantly being a Java-based game is great. We had uh, ease of accessibility, you could get on anywhere. No ridiculous downloads, no, no plugins even. You can get on it behind a firewall in some cases. Um, and we wanted to retain that accessibility. What we didn't want to do was price our um, players out of the market. We didn't want them to go and spend £1,000, $2,000 on a new PC just to run out of new technology. Both platforms will be run in parallel and you can get everything that they can offer other than obviously the hardware limitations. I know you've referenced it, but we didn't actually talk about the new audio. So can you go ahead and give us a sense of what that's going to bring to the table? Yeah, the new audio, I mean, uh, Jagex, it's really important to RuneScape as a product and Jagex as a company. Um, we, we love the graphics, we love the gameplay, but the audio is just as important. It reinforces the lore that it, it is so intertwined in every piece of content. It, it stirs up emotion. Now what we're doing is, um, rather than tack it on, it's got its own engine. It's going to have its own server, so it can basically stream dedicated music, CD quality music in 16-bit through your browser without no huge overheads, you know, and, and it won't impact your gameplay but better quality sound. And working with some fine orchestras, uh, fine composers and whatnot to really take it to the next level, it, it's pretty much on par with what you see with your AAAs. Um, if you, if you wouldn't bat an eyelid, it's really good. For, for people that still haven't played browser-based games or that still have that old thought of, you know, browser-based is a step down, what impact do you hope RuneScape 3 has? To see how, see how good browser game can be. Like I say, um, if I just took the interface component alone, I don't think many people will find a product out there. Once they try this on RuneScape, they'll be wanting it on their other products as well. In terms of a game, there is so much content. You don't need to be in a mood to play RuneScape, and you just find the content that suits your mood. 